In late 2013, a microscopic virus began a deadly journey. It leapt from animal host to human victim. It was the beginning of the worst Ebola outbreak in history. If you go to the morgue, you see dead bodies, 15, 16, 17, 18, dead bodies all in, in body bags. The killer virus was unidentified for three months. By then, hundreds of people were infected. So I was afraid it would just be this like black plague with uh, this inexorable spread across the continent and beyond. By summer 2014, the outbreak was completely out of control. There were bodies in the street, there were no safe burials, there were no treatment center. Uh, it can only go one way. There were hundreds of new infections each week and cases in the U.S. and Europe. It's spiraling out of control. It is getting worse. It's spreading faster and exponentially. This is the story of Ebola's deadly journey and what it means for the world. There are going to be more of these. No matter what we think, Ebola was not an exception. Ebola is a precedent. You're in a jungle in the remote forest region of Guinea, West Africa. It is December 2013. This tree is thought to be where it all began. In our village, there is a huge tree. It used to be full of bats. One day, a bat came out and we killed it. We lit a fire and they fell from the top of the tree. Then we ate them. At the time, had anyone died? No, it hadn't started yet. When my son fell ill, I thought it was witchcraft. I thought someone had cursed our family. He had a fever. He developed diarrhea and was refusing to eat. Then he died. The husband knocked on my door. He said, Mr. Augustine. I said, yes. He said, open the door. I said, what's wrong? He said, my wife won't stop bleeding. He said, all she does is bleed and bleed, and it's not going well. I went to the house, and she was in a room. The whole house was covered in blood. When I saw that, I was scared. By the time the virus is identified as Ebola, it has already traveled hundreds of miles. The response of the government and the World Health Organization is chaotic. Every day, day after day, disorganized meeting, no decision taken, no one knowing about what they were talking about. We had the idea that Ebola was something which was severe, but typically occurred in a certain way and then could be handled but at that time, we didn't really know how, how complex it was going to become. The outbreak crosses an international border to neighboring Sierra Leone. You are in the village of Kapandu in eastern Sierra Leone. This is the calm before the storm. A traditional healer, famous throughout the region, has just died. Her burial will cause an explosion of new cases. When she died, we washed the whole body. We washed under her arms, 
between her legs, cut her toenails. We dress the corpse in clean clothes. If the hair is loose, we braid it. If we had not buried her properly, her ghost would have haunted us. Her angry spirit would have possessed our children. I feel sick. And villagers said that white people would come for me and that they would take me to the hospital. But there was a rumor that white people were killing patients with injections. So I ran away. Thirty-seven health workers died at the Kerima Government Hospital. Thirty-seven, including doctors, nurses, porters, cleaners, security, lab technicians. If you go to the morgue, you see dead bodies, 15, 16, 17, 18, dead bodies all in, in body bags. Then I start to wonder, what is happening? Maybe this is the end of the world. Maybe everybody is going to die. By the time the World Health Organization declares an emergency in August 2014, it is too late. The number of infections is rising exponentially. It was a race against time. And I guess we didn't have the same type of watch, the WHO and I. So, so we wanted them to get a real sense of urgency. The outbreak is now raging in three countries, Liberia, Sierra Leone, and Guinea. It then migrates to Africa's most populous country, Nigeria. We were looking at um, one of the most dangerous pathogens that we knew, growing at an exponential rate across a broad geographic area, something we had never seen before. What this outbreak demonstrated very, very quickly is that capacity to manage something on this scale doesn't exist. You are at an Ebola treatment center. Everything beyond the orange fence is potentially contaminated with the virus. It is August 2014, and the number of infections in the Liberian capital of Monrovia is rising exponentially. Doctors Without Borders run the only Ebola hospital in the city, but there is not enough room for the patients. It's very, extremely horrible because people are dying, sometimes uh, very distressing deaths beside a child. Or, yeah, you find the mother that was trying to care for her child dead, and then you've got a baby, and trying to work out how, how on earth are you going to try and deal with a ch an unaccompanied child in an overfull centre, it was really hard. To stand there and, and you look in the face of, of people and, and you have to tell them that I'm sorry, you have to go home, and they, they're begging you, and I, I don't want to go home to my family and, and risking infecting them as well. Uh, and still, I uh, look at uh, these people and uh, I said, oh, if I have to take someone, I have to take this woman uh, that lies on the ground here. She is very, very sick, and she probably will be dead shortly. If I have to take someone, I have to take her. I can't take you. There is no space. I was just praying for God's intervention. I prayed that God would save me and my children. It was just them and me now. Then my son stopped talking. That was when they came for him. Then he died in my hands.
10 months after the outbreak began, the U.S. and other countries send in thousands of troops to build treatment centers, and the outbreak begins to slow. After more than 11,000 deaths, a vaccine is developed which scientists say could prevent future epidemics. But health officials are already fearful that the next international outbreak could be something even worse than Ebola. There are going to be more of these. No matter what we think, Ebola was not an exception. Ebola is a precedent. How do we make sure nobody makes a mistake the next time and everybody gets it? Because you know what? Everybody got it wrong on this one.